Nice takedown by Cejudo. Imagine being the champion of the world. Challengers kneeling in front of you. All the stats singing of your greatness. Would you be a gracious victor or would you let all that get in your head? As it seems, the two-time bantamweight champion TJ Dillashaw chose the latter when he was scheduled to fight Henry Cejudo. So what did TJ do to be in our cocky fighter list? And how did karma finally catch up to him? Stay tuned to know about this and what was really at stake in this fight between two champions. You might wonder how this feud between two fighters from different weight divisions started. It began with UFC 217. Henry Cejudo just dethroned the legend of the flyweight division Demetrius Johnson and became the world champion in the 1-25 weight category. On that same night for the title of bantamweight champion, Cody Garbrandt stood against TJ Dillashaw. TJ won the match, securing his second bantamweight championship. Henry, after his much-coveted win, got on the stage and challenged the bantamweight champion. Instead of Henry going up in the 135-weight division, TJ came down and challenged Henry for the flyweight title. That's good and all, but the arrogance with which TJ did it was something else. Plus, for Henry, this fight was not only about defending the precious belt and title he worked so hard for, but it was also about something much, much more important. For him, this was the fight for the survival of the 125 weight division. But why would a fight between two champions decide the fate of an entire division? Long story short, there had been whispers about UFC CEO Dana White considering removing the flyweight category altogether. For some time, people started to view this weight division as boring. 125 was thought to have lost the admiration and attention it once commanded. Being the champion of the 125 division, Henry Cejudo took its survival very seriously. In a time like this, TJ appeared in the scene as a grim reaper. It was widely understood that losing this fight to TJ would signal the beginning of the end for the flyweights. So the stakes for the fight could not be any higher. To make it worse, TJ positioned himself as the assassin of the category, showing no regard for its existence whatsoever. This lack of respect for the entire division struck a nerve with Henry. Combining the demeaning tone TJ used when talking about Henry with this assassin avatar, you could almost feel the arrogance oozing out of TJ. You could say TJ reached the cocky hall of fame. Let's be honest. A little banter is a fair game between two fighters. This banter and trash talk is what adds flavor, color, and spice to the fight. But you should never lose respect for another fighter. And this is not just any other fighter we are talking about. This is Henry Cejudo, Olympic gold medalist and the flyweight champion of the world. But TJ never gave him the respect Henry deserved, acting as if his opponent was a preschooler and this fight was as easy as stealing candy from a baby. I mean, see for yourself. Look, look at this smug grin on TJ's face. This grin makes it abundantly clear that TJ did not even consider the possibility of him losing to a guy like Henry. In fact, in one of the interviews by TMZ Sports, TJ Dillashaw outright said that the flyweight belt weighs too much for Henry, and that Henry is begging him to take the belt away from him. He said that Henry never gave anyone black eyes implying that the flyweight champion does not have the power. He went as far as to say that Henry's fighting style is boring and that people fall asleep when he fights. But he assured that in their upcoming match, everyone will be glued to their TVs in anticipation of TJ putting Henry to sleep. Phew. Talk about arrogance. But if there is one thing this universe likes to prove over and over again, what goes up must come down. After all this flying high and cockiness, Karma finally decided to give TJ Dillashaw a visit on January 19th, 2019. On this fateful night, Henry Cejudo and TJ Dillashaw walked into the octagon brimming with people. TJ Dillashaw was cocky as ever, laughing and screaming like a man who knows he will obliterate all that stands before him. Henry, on the other hand, is staring at him with a stern gaze. From TJ's previous remarks, one can easily understand what he thinks about this fight. A walk in the park. He must have already dreamed about this victory a thousand times, standing victorious in front of an unconscious and weak Henry. But fate had something else in store for the match. The referee announces the start of the fight. Both fighters buzzing with aggression rush towards each other. Chest puffed, arms raised, 
eager to bury their hands deep into the opponent. Bam! A kick. TJ makes the first strike. Henry retaliates violently by hurling towards TJ and throwing a massive high kick. TJ takes a step back and partially evades it. A direct hit with full impact might have ended the fight right there and then. But one thing is for sure. Nothing is boring about the way these fighters were fighting that night. Henry is fast, aggressive, and determined. With one push, he manages to make TJ Dillashaw lose his balance and wrestles him to the ground. In the past, TJ repeatedly mocked Henry's punching power. But under the barrage of punches, TJ seemed to get increasingly helpless and desperate. But Henry's hands did not stop for one second. Bam! 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 One punch after the other and soon TJ could hardly stand up. After only 31 seconds in the ring, the referee stops the match. The referee deemed the punches too lethal for TJ Dillashaw, the same punches TJ mocked as weak. Henry emerges as the victor defeating the man who arrogantly claimed would knock Henry unconscious and terminate the whole flyweight division. Instead, TJ is the one who groveled on the floor for most of this very short fight and lost in the very first round. Henry defends his title and his beloved 125 division, while TJ pays for his arrogance. Karma truly is the best of all teachers. But karma as it seems was not done with TJ after all. Soon after the fight, TJ tested positive for EPO, a forbidden performance enhancing drug. Just think about what it means. This means TJ lost the fight in the first round even though he was under a performance enhancing substance. TJ Dillashaw got suspended by USADA for two whole years and as a result, relinquished his bantamweight title. Once hailed as a champion, he now is regarded as a cheat, a disgraced fighter. Many felt that this once great fighter got so consumed by the idea of his greatness that he lost respect for his opponent and the rules of the fight. He believed he could beat anyone and get away with anything. But Henry Cejudo taught him otherwise, and karma was unforgiving in her lessons, destroying TJ Dillashaw both as a fighter and as a person. Unfortunately, such stories have become all too familiar. Great fighters get so boastful about their achievements that they lose sight of what made them great in the first place. This arrogance is what haunts them in the end. The same is true in the world of Muay Thai. Click on this video to watch how a cocky Muay Thai fighter was humbled by a legend of the sport. See you on that video.